Lesson 3 Light shines in the darkness. Sabbath afternoon, April 13. Satan is constantly presenting inducements to God's chosen people to attract their minds from the solemn work of preparation for the scenes just in the future. He is in every sense of the word a deceiver, a skillful charmer. He clothes his plans and snares with coverings of light borrowed from heaven. He tempted Eve to eat of the forbidden fruit by making her believe that she would be greatly advantaged thereby. Satan has many finely woven dangerous nets which are made to appear innocent, but with which he is skillfully preparing to infatuate God's people. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 550. When under the temptations of Satan, men fall into error, and their words and deportment are not Christ-like, they may not realize their condition because sin is deceptive and tends to deaden the moral perceptions. But through self-examination, searching of the scriptures, and humble prayer, they will, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, be enabled to see their mistake. If they then confess their sins and turn from them, the tempter will not appear to them as an angel of light, but as a deceiver. Those who acknowledge reproof and correction as from God and are thus enabled to see and correct their errors are learning precious lessons even from their mistakes. Their apparent defeat is turned into victory. They stand trusting not to their own strength, but to the strength of God. They have earnestness, zeal, and affection united with humility and regulated by the precepts of God's word. They walk not stumblingly, but safely, in a path where the light of heaven shines. That I may know him, page 239. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John chapter 8, verse 12. All who are traveling the road to heaven need a safe guide. We must not walk in human wisdom. It is our privilege to listen to the voice of Christ speaking to us as we walk the journey of life, and his words are always words of wisdom. Satan is working with great diligence to compass the ruin of the souls of men. He has come down with great power, knowing that he has but a short time to work. Our only safety lies in following closely after Christ, walking in his wisdom, and practicing his truth. We cannot always readily detect the working of Satan. We do not know where he lays his traps. But Jesus understands the subtle arts of the enemy, and he can keep our feet in safe paths. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14, verse 6. Christ declares, Our High Calling, page 16. Sunday, April 14. Compromise, Satan's Subtle Strategy Christ is the author of all truth. Every brilliant conception, every thought of wisdom, every capacity and talent of men is the gift of Christ. He borrowed no new ideas from humanity, for he originated all. But when he came to earth, he found the bright gems of truth which he had entrusted to man all buried up in superstition and tradition. Truths of most vital importance were placed in the framework of error to serve the purpose of the arch-deceiver. But Christ swept away erroneous theories of every grade. No one save the world's Redeemer had power to present the truth in its primitive purity, divested of the error that Satan had accumulated to hide its heavenly beauty. The work of Christ was to take the truth of which the people were in want and separate it from error and present it free from the superstitions of the world that the people might accept it on its own intrinsic and eternal merit. He dispersed the mists of doubt that the truth might be revealed and shed distinct rays of light into the darkness of men's hearts. That I May Know Him, page 207. Satan is concentrating all his energies to bend your will to his, to make you his agent in opposing the plans of Christ, that you may refuse to have Jesus reign over you. 
Satan will seek to draw you away from Christ that you may become his agent in drawing others away and thus frustrate the plans of God. He is the father of lies, and he weaves a net of falsehood in which he binds you with cords of lies to his service. The more intelligent you are, the more attractive, the harder he will work that he may persuade you to lay your talents at his feet and aid him to accomplish his ends in alluring others under his black banner. Satan is the bewitcher, and he has wrought that Christ may be expelled from the soul and that he himself may be there enthroned. I beg of you, sons and daughters, to break from the infatuation of the evil one. Flee to Jesus as your refuge and lay hold upon eternal life. Sons and Daughters of God, page 336. The transforming influence of truth sanctifies the soul. The love of God flows into the soul and gratitude springs up in the heart that was as cold as a stone. Christ crucified, Christ our righteousness wins the heart and brings it to repentance. This theme is so simple that children can grasp it. The wise and learned are charmed with it, while they behold it in its depths of wisdom, love, and power, which they can never fathom. We want to present this precious truth to the people who are bound in sin. Let all see that Christ was slain for their transgressions, that he desires to save them. We should be pervaded with a deep abiding sense of the value, sanctity, and the authority of the truth. My Life Today, page 265. Monday, April 15. Savage Wolves. Two great opposing powers are revealed in the last great battle. On one side stands the Creator of heaven and earth. All on His side bear His signet. They are obedient to His commands. On the other side stands the Prince of Darkness, with those who have chosen apostasy and rebellion. The present is a solemn, fearful time for the Church, for the Spirit of God is gradually withdrawing from the world. Satan is also mustering his forces of evil, going forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them under his banner, to be trained for the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Satan is to make most powerful efforts for the mastery in the last great conflict. Fundamental principles will be brought out and decisions made in regard to them. Skepticism is prevailing everywhere. Ungodliness abounds. The faith of individual members of the church will be tested as though there were not another person in the world. Ellen G. White comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 7, pages 982 and 983. When the deceiver commences his work of deception, he frequently finds the similarity of tastes and habits, but by great pretensions to godliness, he gains the confidence, and when this is done, his wily deceptive power is exercised in his own way to carry out his devices. Men professing to have new light, claiming to be reformers, will have great influence over a certain class who are convinced of the heresies that exist in the present age and who are not satisfied with the spiritual condition of the churches. With true, honest hearts, these desire to see a change for the better, a coming up to a higher standard. If the faithful servants of Christ would present the truth, pure and unadulterated, to this class, they would accept it and purify themselves by obeying it. But Satan, ever vigilant, sets upon the track of these inquiring souls. Someone making high profession as a reformer comes to them as Satan came to Christ disguised as an angel of light and draws them still further from the path of right. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 143 and 144. In every age since the fall of Adam, the opposition of evil agencies has made the lives of those who would be loyal and true to God's commandments a continual warfare. Those who would at last be victorious must meet and conquer the forces of Satan, who with fierce determination opposes every step of advance. They must meet a vigilant foe, a crafty enemy who never sleeps and who tries untiringly to undermine the faith of God's servants. Good and evil never harmonize. 
Between light and darkness, there can be no compromise. Truth is light revealed. Error is darkness. Light has no fellowship with darkness. Righteousness, no fellowship with unrighteousness. God has provided the armor and the weapons with which each one is to fight. Let the soldiers of Christ put on the whole armor of God and flinch not at Satan's attacks. In Heavenly Places, page 260. Tuesday, April 16. Safeguarded by the Word. The great and essential knowledge is the knowledge of God and His Word. There should be a daily increasing of spiritual understanding, and the Christian will grow in grace just in proportion as he depends upon and appreciates the teaching of the Word of God and habituates himself to meditate upon divine things. By partaking of this word, our spiritual strength is increased. We grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth. Habits of self-control are formed and strengthened. The infirmities of childhood, fretfulness, willfulness, selfishness, hasty words, passionate acts, disappear, and in their place are developed the graces of Christian manhood and womanhood. God's Amazing Grace, page 303. In the Word of God is a light shining in a dark place. As we search its pages, light enters the heart, illuminating the mind. By this light, we see what we ought to be. We see in the Word warnings and promises with God behind them all. We are invited to search this Word for aid when brought into difficult places. If we do not consult the guidebook at every step, inquiring, Is this the way of the Lord? Our words and acts will be tainted by selfishness. We shall forget God and walk in paths that He has not chosen for us. God's Word is full of precious promises and helpful counsel. It is infallible, for God cannot err. It has help for every circumstance and condition of life, and God looks on with sadness when His children turn from it to human aid. He who through the Scriptures holds communion with God will be ennobled and sanctified. As he reads the inspired record of the Savior's love, his heart will melt in tenderness and contrition. He will be filled with a desire to be like his Master, to live a life of loving service. By a miracle of His power, He has preserved His written word through the ages. My Life Today, page 27 The Lord, in His great mercy, has revealed to us in the Scriptures the rules of holy living. He has inspired holy men to record, for our benefit, instruction concerning the dangers that beset the path and how to escape them. Those who obey his injunction to search the scriptures will not be ignorant of these things. Amid the perils of the last days, every member of the church should understand the reasons of his hope and faith, reasons which are not difficult of comprehension. There is enough to occupy the mind if we would grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever the people of God are growing in grace, they will be constantly obtaining a clearer understanding of His Word. They will discern new light and beauty in its sacred truths. This has been true in the history of the Church in all ages, and thus it will continue to the end. God's Amazing Grace, page 303 Wednesday, April 17 Human Reasoning Apart from Scripture The subject of Christ's teaching and preaching was the Word of God. He met questioners with a plain, It is written. What saith the Scriptures? How readest thou? At every opportunity when an interest was awakened by either friend or foe, he sowed the seed of the Word. He who is the way, the truth, and the life, himself the living Word, points to the scriptures saying, They are they which testify of me. John chapter 5 verse 39. 
Christ's servants are to do the same work. In our day, as of old, the vital truths of God's word are set aside for human theories and speculations. Many professed ministers of the gospel do not accept the whole Bible as the inspired word. One wise man rejects one portion, another questions another part. They set up their judgment as superior to the word, and the scripture which they do teach rests upon their own authority. Christ rebuked these practices in his day. The Bible is to be presented as the word of the infinite God, as the end of all controversy and the foundation of all faith. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 38 and 39. It is one of Satan's devices to lead the people to accept the fables of infidelity, for he can thus obscure the law of God, in itself very plain, and embolden men to rebel against the divine government. His efforts are especially directed against the fourth commandment because it so clearly points to the living God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Human reasoning is accepted even by professed Christians in opposition to plain scripture facts. There are many who oppose the investigation of the prophecies, especially those of Daniel and the Revelation, declaring them to be so obscure that we cannot understand them. Yet these very persons eagerly receive the suppositions of geologists in contradiction of the Mosaic record. But if that which God has revealed is so difficult to understand, how inconsistent it is to accept mere suppositions in regard to that which he has not revealed. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 113. Spiritual darkness has covered the earth and gross darkness the people. There are in many churches skepticism and infidelity in the interpretation of the scriptures. Many, very many, are questioning the verity and truth of the scriptures. Human reasoning and the imaginings of the human heart are undermining the inspiration of the Word of God, and that which should be received as granted is surrounded with a cloud of mysticism. Nothing stands out in clear and distinct lines upon rock bottom. This is one of the marked signs of the last days. This holy book has withstood the assaults of Satan, who has united with evil men to make everything of divine character shrouded in clouds and darkness. But the Lord has preserved this holy book by his own miraculous power in its present shape, a chart or guidebook to the human family to show them the way to heaven. Selected Messages, Book 1, Page 15 Thursday, April 18. Battle for the Mind. Today, men are eagerly seeking for earthly treasure. Their minds are filled with selfish, ambitious thoughts. For the sake of gaining worldly riches, honor, or power, they place the maxims, traditions, and requirements of men above the requirements of God. From them, the treasures of His Word are hidden. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. The Savior saw that men were absorbed in getting gain and were losing sight of eternal realities. He undertook to correct this evil. He sought to break the infatuating spell that was paralyzing the soul. He presents before fallen humanity the nobler world they have lost sight of, that they may behold eternal realities. He takes them to the threshold of the infinite, flushed with the indescribable glory of God, and shows them the treasure there. Christ's Object Lessons, page 106. Man through sin has been severed from the life of God. His soul is palsied through the machinations of Satan, the author of sin. Of himself, he is incapable of sensing sin, incapable of appreciating and appropriating the divine nature. Were it brought within his reach, there is nothing in it that his natural heart would desire it. The bewitching power of Satan is upon him. All the ingenious subterfuges the devil can suggest are presented to his mind to prevent every good impulse. 
But God will not be defeated by Satan. He sent his son into the world that through his taking the human form and nature, humanity and divinity combined in him would elevate man in the scale of moral value with God. There is no other way for man's salvation. Without me, says Christ, ye can do nothing. Through Christ and Christ alone, the springs of life can vitalize man's nature, transform his tastes, and set his affections flowing toward heaven. Through the union of the divine with the human nature, Christ could enlighten the understanding and infuse his life-giving properties through the soul dead in trespasses and sins. Ellen G. White comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 1099. Heaven, looking down and seeing the delusions into which men were led, knew that a divine instructor must come to the earth. Through the misrepresentations of the enemy, many were so deceived that they worshipped a false god clothed with the attributes of the satanic character. Those in ignorance and moral darkness must have light, spiritual light, for the world knew not God, and he must be revealed to their understanding. Truth looked down from heaven and saw not the reflection of her image, for dense clouds of spiritual darkness and gloom enveloped the world. The Lord Jesus alone was able to roll back the clouds, for he is the light of the world. By his presence, he could dissipate the gloomy shadow that Satan had cast between man and God. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 28. For further reading, That I May Know Him, Central Theme of the Scriptures, page 208, and The Upward Look, Time to Wake Up, page 50.